Hello. Welcome to the first session of the second half of the day, which I myself will be holding. So, uh, bug reports and feature proposals, and uh, how you as a user can participate or be important for our development process. So we have of course our developers who write the actual code, but uh, it's very important for us to get feedback. Anyway, uh, Nathan Edward for those who are still not familiar with me. Um, on internet I use Jester King uh, as a nick. And um, I have been working since September part-time on uh, Blender uh, for bug fixing and at some point I will start the technical development. Uh, technical documentation. Uh, part of this uh, assignment is bug fixing and I have noticed that uh, we do get a lot of bug reports and uh, uh, users try their best of course but I think it's good to um, explain a little bit what uh, would be good to get from you users. So bug reports Another part uh, that is important is uh, you as user will inevitably have ideas of how to do things, um, what things you need for maybe some very specific task, maybe uh, improvements on, on existing uh, tools we have. So I will shortly talk about that too. So bug reporting. Uh, it's very annoying to work on a, a, a really difficult scene, model. You have put in hours of time and suddenly, where is Blender? It's gone, crash. Or similar situations. Uh, I can imagine the gray hairs it causes to artists, especially close to deadlines. <clears throat> well then, you can obviously wait for things to happen. Uh, the nice thing is that uh, we have a group of uh, passionate developers who try to improve Blender as much as possible. And one way to do that is just to tell us that you have encountered a problem. Just telling us, ah, it crashed, is not enough. <laughs> I understand this is where it all starts. But for us developers to be able to do anything about it, we need several pieces of information. So all the information, uh, the most important parts of information is um, the Blender version you are using, especially if you use um, uh, custom builds you do from uh, the bleeding edge, so from today. Uh, it's very important for us to know what you're working with. So in the splash screen from 2.5 on, we have, uh, apart from the version number, also the revision number uh, in, in a splash screen. And uh, it's up to the builder to ensure that this information is there. Uh, it is quite likely that if uh, we get a report about Blender and we are not sure what version it is or it is not possible to uh, figure out uh, when it happened, it might be that such a report um, uh, is maybe discarded. So version information is very important for us. We know then uh, uh, at what point something might have gone wrong. Another one with the 2.55, which I still haven't pressed the release button for, um, <coughs> is the uh, system information script, uh, which you can find in the help menu. Uh, a little bit small maybe. But uh, there is uh, an entry called system info. Uh, you press that and it will create a new text block which can be found in the text editor. Um, like so. Hmm. So here you can see um, what blender version is used. Uh, the revision that was used and where it was a release build or a deb debug build. Also, very important for us are the compile flags. You as a user probably don't care, 
but uh, sometimes we get bug reports uh, uh, that uh, of, of issues that appear when you have a build that's optimized and it's doing over optimization and that kind of things all the very annoying is something we uh, currently don't do much about we support uh, uh, official builds uh, in the first place of course if we can find with a, a reasonable amount of effort uh, problems with the uh, custom builds then of course we will try our best but it uh, shows the uh, build flags and then um, paths used for blender and um, especially if you have uh, pro startup problems with blender so you have missing uh, scripts maybe or missing parts of the interface uh, if this script still works it is very um, uh, helpful for us to know if you have uh, maybe um, uh, special characters in your path. It has been a problem, and I hope we have all those fixed, but it, sometimes it still is a problem. Uh, especially on Windows machines, uh, users can uh, use uh, uh, special characters in the machine name, and that uh, will that broke some scripts because Python did not uh, handle that correctly. So this text file, uh, attach it to a bug report. That will help us a lot. Um, just uh, run another time and generate. It, it, for us, it's just a system and a version that's important to get. Uh, I agree that it would be very nice to have a, a way to uh, generate a crash dump from uh, the crash you got, but we don't have uh, code for that yet on our support. And there is a feature proposal for it, but we need someone to implement it. So, can you put up your hand? Oh, uh, up there. So, um, uh, if you use scons, uh, you need to put uh, the uh, tool, command line tool, SVN version in your path. If that's in your path, you will get the, um, the revision number in, in the splash. So I can quickly show, I think. I think I don't have it on this machine, but um, you get you can get uh, on Windows machine again get, uh, get the command line tools for SVN, uh, set them in some path and add that path with that contains all the binaries, add it to your path uh, when building. Uh, Linux has this already installed. Uh, OS X probably will have to install uh, separately, but just uh, if you do your own builds, it would be really nice to have this information. If it's not in your splash, and you do your own builds, you can find it by uh, uh, giving the command svn log. Then it will tell you what is your current status. Or maybe svn status should do as well. But include the information. It's, it's important for us. Uh, sometimes uh, we have, for instance, already managed to fix a bug and then it's for us just a matter to tell to update your source code or just to mention in in a comment that okay this is an issue we have already already uh, fixed and will be in the next release where to uh, report these bugs we have a site called projectsblender.org oh. I use special version of Firefox but here down is the uh, URL for it, projectsblender.org. You need to be registered currently because we have some performance issues with the, with the website. We are trying to upgrade it. Uh, it will happen in the future. <laughs> uh, um, but for now, we use this tracker. Let's see. OK. Uh, you log in, and I just, just this one. 
uh, I've been lazy. I haven't updated this link yet. This goes to um, a reporting page for the old tracker. So just make sure you are in the new tracker. And submitting a new report you can do here. There is a, a introductory video. It's uh, nice to watch. Um, I have added this first notice that uh, we don't like to see uh, errors with build systems in the bug tracker. The bug tracker is specifically for Blender itself when you use it. So if there, there are errors, those kind of bugs, you can report on this tracker. If you have problems with build systems or linking errors or with your, uh, your own system, uh, you can uh, contact us on IRC in Blender coders or write a message to the mailing list. Most of the times, uh, build errors, uh, compile errors, are fixed in a matter of uh, hours, maybe even minutes. So, uh, important also is if you have a procedure uh, you're working with, you're scoping something, and you get a crash, uh, you have, for instance, added some modifier somewhere, uh, uh, when you're generating this report, try to make uh, uh, a step-by-step -step, uh, description of how to redo with as few steps as possible because that will uh, eliminate like different paths for us that we need to check uh, when, when we get a bug report. So the smallest possible sample you can create, that will be really good. Uh, for most bug reports, we require uh, some file which uh, exhibits this problem and, and uh, a set of descriptions uh, how you uh, created a crash or, or some faulty geometry or whatever is wrong. So uh, add the blend file if possible. I think we have uh, a 7 megabyte upload limit for one file. If possible also uh, render, uh, if there is a, like a render artifact attached to that as well. Uh, it's okay to write also in the text, in the summary, but uh, a render especially if you can encircle your what you have found uh, helps us a lot without having to feel, uh, uh, guess what someone uh, means but we have a lot of users and uh, not everybody is good with uh, english which is okay but sometimes it's a little bit hard for us to uh, understand what someone's trying to tell I even if it's a ver very valid valid uh, bug report and with uh, import export um, if something goes wrong with it, uh, if you have a small exa example, uh, attach that as well. So the project blender org is where where you send it. Um, the resolution you don't have to set. Uh, it, do it doesn't make sense to set it to fixed. We do that as developers. Um, a summary, a, a short title of what the issue is about. Just Blender crashes is not good enough. If you cra it crashes with a specific operation, um, say like um, adding this modifier crashes Blender. So we know already what it is about before we start reading the detailed description. And in this detail detailed description, you write step by step how you came to this. Like uh, best would be open Blender. Um, Select cube, or it's more, uh, by default selected. Um, add subserve modifier and see it crash. That is what we like to see. Uh, category, if you know uh, what it is related to, is it scripting, is it uh, uh, some of the mesh tools, is it maybe uh, platform related, you can select this. It, it helps us, it's not necessary, it's not obligatory. So the most important things are the summary, a good description, more than <coughs> crash or error, and a concise, clear description of what you need. Attach all 
all files uh, we require. So please, if you have the time, create a small, uh, a small uh, sample of what went wrong. If it's really hard to redo, uh, you can try adding the complex uh, project you're working with, if you are allowed to. Uh, but it um, decreases the chance that we are uh, um, able to find the solution quickly. Of course, sometimes uh, we are working on, on a feature and uh, one of us knows exactly why it happens and of course it didn't get handled right away. But uh, this is one way where you can help as a user really much. Um, if you are technically uh, able to do so uh, and you know how to do it uh, using a debug, debug build or creating one would be very nice. Uh, then we would require backtrace. So for those who don't understand that, you can ignore that right away. But for those who know, please add a backtrace of a crash. That helps us to also see right away where in the code something went wrong. So we can just open our editor we love, like Vim, and um, just look at the code. Uh, maybe check from the uh, history of the file what changes have been there and we should be able to determine what is the problem and have a fix maybe in five minutes. Uh, I've been working now also on uh, providing these weekly reports on our progress. Um, I have a small blend file with a few scripts I use to uh, generate statistics on these reports. So I sh quickly show it. Just a, a boring script that uh, parses the uh, export from this tracker, um, puts in some variables and then prints out. And I have here uh, some functions that create uh, meshes based on this data. So just then works like run script, done, no feedback or whatever. I know what it's doing. And now we have, uh, it's probably not visible, but this graph has changed. This one, another one, and oh, this one is the first one, second one, third one. And in the stats, here we see uh, how many submitters we have had, so users like you, uh, about 1,200 people have been submit submitting bug reports. So we get an awful lot of bug reports. And uh, some we close right away because they are of poor quality, quality just like uh, this crashes on startup without telling what operating system, what version. It's not something we can do anything with. Uh, for us to be able to uh, fix, fix a bug report, we should be able to reproduce it on our own systems. So sometimes it will happen that uh, we start uh, a discussion on, on the bug report in the comments section uh, on asking what did you do if something is unclear. So we hope that the people are also um, active in uh, following what, what happens with the bug reports. I try to uh, do this triaging uh, actively, and uh, now that I've been at this conference running around like mad, mm, it has been a bit less. As you can see, uh, with the 2.55 release, we had, I think, 192 open bug reports. I haven't been doing that for a few days, and boom, a lot of bug reports. So it's really great that you people do it. Um, just keep these uh, small, uh, some simple rules in mind, and it helps us a lot in fixing bugs. Another part, very quickly, because I'm also running out of time, time is uh, feature proposals. Uh, very many interesting ideas also at this conference. It's very clear you have good ideas. Um, also with this, it is very important just to formulate your ideas clearly and with thought, argument your ideas. Uh, I have uh, set up uh, BlenderStorm, and uh, it will undergo 
some uh, layout changes because this is not ready enough for you. But this is a place where uh, people can um, add ideas uh, and work on them. So you add an idea, uh, you want uh, camera properties added, and you, uh, you tell why you need them. So it's very important to also give use cases. Why do you need something? Just not, uh, it's not enough to sell, tell us, I want field of view. I don't know. This may be nice, but do we need it? If you can argument what you need, it is for developers who are interested in picking up work or looking for jobs to do with Blender or something, or some features to implement, especially for new developers, it helps a lot if you as user can tell uh, clearly what you want. So it's all about communication, bug reports, but also feature proposals. Um, this is one thing uh, what I would not like to see. Uh, it's okay to uh, uh, tell there are things missing, but um, well, maybe this is maybe not the best uh, example. But sometimes uh, people uh, send in feature proposals that are more like bug reports, like um, mm, border rendering doesn't work. I think we had one report like that. Uh, for bug reports, things that don't work as they should, report them to our bug tracker. But for new ideas, for new features, new tools, you can use uh, Blender Storm. I'm not used to you, uh, talking with a slideshow, so I have to check where I am with my talk. Um, okay, Blender Storm, you can use, but also uh, uh, the wiki is a good place to uh, work on proposals. Uh, when you have re registered, you can, on, under your a user page, you can create as many pages as you want. Um, uh, when you are working on, on a proposal, uh, try also to involve other users who have uh, similar needs or ideas uh, for, for your proposal. So you can uh, uh, collaborate on them in creating a good proposal with uh, good arguments and use cases. And if it's something that needs uh, UI, uh, mockups are very good to have as well. So what you should not do in feature proposals is like there are glitches in the, uh, in the user interface. They are very annoying, but not for feature proposals. These are bug reports. Uh, selection is broken. Some problem, don't report them as a feature proposal. Uh, feature proposal really for new ideas, new tools you want. Something like Lua integration, like uh, I want a good scripting. You tell why you need it, uh, what would be good uh, 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 arguments like a sandboxing, so you have a safe uh, a scripting environment for, for users and which might allow uh, for distributing plans without users having to worry that someone is going to eat their hard disk. Uh, clearly worded, and uh, when you have written a proposal, uh, write them to tell us about it, uh, for instance, on our uh, mailing list, BF committers, or on IRC uh, Blender coders. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, IRC, I think, has a faster response rate, but uh, the mailing list is good for discussion. Although on IRC we do have good discussions as well. So, in short, bug reports on projects Blender.org, uh, register there and um, when you send in a bug report, Blender version, so if it's official or custom build, uh, the revision from which it, it is built, so all official releases have always the space correctly. Uh, system info, if you can uh, generate it. Uh, a test blend file or an example blend file that shows the bug as minimal as possible. Uh, uh, renders, uh, for instance, if you have on importers, uh, uh, it's okay to say uh, some parts are missing, but if you send in uh, a largest, um, for instance, Collada file, 
I don't necessarily know how it is supposed to look like. So a render is, would be really good. And very, we have some bug reports that I asked for a render. And it's then very clear what is missing. And I can also check in, in the code what is missing, why it is missing. Um, and for feature proposals and bug reports both, uh, try to communicate as clear as possible. I understand if, uh, if it's hard to uh, write in English if it's not nat native language. but. Um, we try to be as friendly as possible uh, towards everybody. So I think that's the most the important things. But but you can where you as a user can be very important and and helpful for us developers. A um, few more minutes left. Are there questions? Uh, either way, uh, myself, I uh, normally, when I uh, go check a new bug report, I download all files that are attached to it into one bug testing directory. This is my laptop. It's not that uh, much used. At home, I have, I think, hundreds of bug-related uh, uh, files downloaded. You can see I have a bug name and then the file. So. Um, Attach it or paste it in in the bug report. Either way is okay. okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Would it be possible to have maybe a, a link in Blender to, to report a bug or other? I mean, on the main page of the bug tracker today, uh, you have, it's really hard to find the forms, you know, to fill the the bug report. You have to click on. Yes, uh, let, let me check. Them. We might have a, oh, I need to log in. Just one moment. I don't know my passwords. I have so many, and they are at least 40 characters long. No? Ah, okay, so uh, the, the link Report the bug in Blender, the file menu, is already the correct uh, tracker. Oh, that's the correct one. That's the correct one. I, I know that there are some places where it's still wrong. Uh, if you find me on IRC active, try to bug me about this as m many times as you like to do until it is fixed. Sometimes I uh, am either lazy or very busy. Uh, yes, uh, that's where I was lazy. I have not fixed it yet. <laughs> When, when is it a bug and when is the feature uh, request? request? So a, a bug is most likely something that is not working as designed or sometimes as expected. Uh, not working as expected uh, is more in the category of uh, feature proposal. Like I, this is a nice feature, but I would like to have it work in a different way. Then write, you write your ideas about how you see how it should work in your opinion. And a bug report is uh, we tell on, for instance, the release log, uh, this works like clicking left, but you find it doesn't not work like that, like it is advertised, that's a bug. So that's what uh, crashes or things we say it should work and does not work, those are uh, bug reports. One more question. Oh. <coughs> Thank you for listening. and. Uh, Enjoy.
can you put this on? Um, is it possible to get this camera uh, uh, show the, the uh, table when he needs it? Because he has an iPod. Any questions so far? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Well, this is uh, this is my conference on steps in the creation of a uh, Blender workflow for the 3D game for iPad and iPhone in Blender, character creation and setup. We'll see a little bit of everything here. I remember that this is a serious conference, so I don't, I don't want any love here. Catch. Uh, well, um, this new iPad opened a new wave of possibilities in 3D interfacing and application development. Um, it has a sort of powerful OpenGL ES embedded in iPads. It has a new screen size. So an obvious objective would be how do we make, can we make a business in the iPad 3D world? So this presentation will show you the steps done in the process from single idea to huge technical burdens overcoming and to the creation of a full gesture-rich IKEA-based character rigging scheme able to be deployed in, the, in an iPhone or an iPad platform. From uh, idea, concept, sketch it, model testing, uh, texture, rigging, assembly, everything. Coding and, well, testing, these are steps following the 
creation of this uh, state of art character for game development. So don't try this at home. Well, a little bit about my company. It's is uh, Inhuman Vision, where we create, uh, produce, or trying to produce pretty games and applications for mobile devices, mainly focusing on the iPhone and iPad platforms at the moment, and uh, using open source tools mainly, mainly using Blender as a core for the 3D interactive content and specializing on 3D characters. The mission is a little bit the like creation of a better experience for the user, giving a more natural experience, more like a human experience. I will explain it a little bit more about it. Uh, okay. Uh, I will explain briefly the steps for creating another game, but this is 100% uh, extensible to the development of any other kind of platforms, being able to display accelerated graphics as well. So the first thing is uh, the idea generation. How do I come to this? How do we can you know, bring the idea we want to deploy on the iPhone? Um, this is my main drive. What's, what do I want? I want to create a great iPhone iPad game. So in the process, my, my key point is in the main character. This is like a philosophy to, I want to approach the machine to the human level, which is the motion, more than you know, shooting characters are there. It, the motion is more reflected on the human in the avatar's presence and reactions. I'm still a little bit far from that, but I'm in the right path, I think. The target, of course, is the, the viewer. For instance, when we are doing movies and the, to the user and when the applications they are using for a player in the games and, the, and short for the buyer of our products or the, the consumer, consumer indeed. So what kind of game character we can create? We have to think about our objective target, what they like, what they dislike. All right, so um, ah, I forgot to mention, I'm, well, uh, I'm Luis, I'm coming from Venezuela, far away from here, but I am living in well, so many places, first Dublin, now in Spain, and well, I am in Spain now. So my target objective is in Spain, so it's the same for you in your local area. Uh, what's the main thing there? Probably good fight, bullfighting? No, I don't think so. Um, food, perhaps, mm, yeah, a little bit, but soccer, totally, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, uh, in this uh, point, I want to know, well, is there any Dutch people here in the area? <laughs> 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 uh, I just admit, I, I have to say sorry. <laughs> all right, all right. Forget about that. Now, someone should play the ball, right? We have to think about the, the character indeed. I want to create an appealing, fitting character in most of the 3G mobile market, not the iPhones or iPads. So during my research, what, what I found out is that for the project I'm doing is manga. It was the choice to be. Why? Well, it's not too hard to design. It's a model, 3D model, simple. It's a shader not too complex, uh, fitting good in real-time applications. Of, of course, if you are a genius, you have your unique style, you can apply it as well. And of, of also, it, uh, it has a great appeal, fits good for any gender and age. That's what we are focusing on. So. Women, of course, like manga too. I comment this because the, they are a trend. Do not mm, forget about that, that market for games. I heard about experiences when dedicating a little bit more on games for women. Well, increases a lot because uh, it's a for, forget, forbidden, you know, forgetting market. Uh, what else? Yeah, th these are. These devices are not game consoles. These uh, come from being phones with internet access, social networks, GPS, 
And now we want to bring these users to the games. So this new target is now totally different from the console game users. So the, the are, these are men and women from all ages. We must uh, focus on that target. So manga girl, that's the same, that's the single question, single sentence I arises to create the game. Let's make a manga girl playing soccer. Well, sounds easy. Nothing far from there. I uh, will show you a little video of what we are talking about here. Let's see if it displays. Okay. All right, this is it, pretty much. Back to our slides. Okay. So, <laughs> gathering of concepts, brainstorming a little bit, and feedback. First, you have to Google it or Bing it, whatever you do. You must use your best information resource you have at hand, even books or magazines, you, whatever you want for getting your, the concept of what you are looking for. Using the networking, using your cloud, you must you know, share your ideas with your friends. That feedback is, a ter is very important. You shouldn't be afraid or ashamed to speak your mind. And also research, very importantly, about the trends. It's more risky and difficult to start uh, with a new idea no one else had. So to start with, you have to start following your, the trend leaders in this. The anime looks in my research was that uh, there are two birds, but I focus on three for a choice. They are like a sort of childish characters, then there are the mid ages, and uh, there are the big ones, like a Barbie doll or something. But some characteristics are very common to all of them, and it's big eyes, absolutely. So you have to check for big eyes as well. So, is there any soccer girl in the room? No? No? Do, do girls play soccer? Yeah, they do. So you have to also look for inspirational model. So this is a simple image I put, but I have a lot more I can show you after. <laughs> so the technology adoption, uh, online resources and maximizing your own talent. You sometimes, for example, here I often hear that people saying things like, "Okay, I can model in Blender, okay, but I cannot texture it in Blender, so I choose another tool, probably Maya or some." Okay. So this is, I think, the example of how the slight lack of knowledge in the tool determine a technology adoption. I think that's a no-no. Uh, the main thing um, personally made me change so far to change the tool to a paid one is time, just that. 
So if you have the time, the technology adoption, the technology shouldn't drive you. You do, you do drive the tech to do it what you want. Another exception probably is the hardware dependent software, probably as the Xcode compiler for Mac OS X, but things are changing too fast. In my case, I look for open source tools, Blender, as you know, the core, Linux, for most of the 3D development process, and GIMP, uh, for almost all, almost all the texturing process, and then the SIO2 for the graphics engine. Choice of SIO2, which is a graphics engine for uh, mobile devices, over others is that the fact that it is open source at the first moment, well, at least as the 1.4 version, uh, there is going to be changes in that business model, but I can still live with that. Ro Romain Marucci, we choose Blender as the, in the first place as the 3D development environment for his engine, and I, and I think it works pretty good for that. So what creating my workflow is like, you will probably heard creating your pipeline, but I come from a more an IT business, so it, it's more easy for me to speak about workflow. So what if I create a, the same label of integration uh, or at least that acceptable one, not that fancy one, for instance, but cheaper, or, pre or perhaps for free. I will talk a little bit about interfaces. If I am doing, for instance, some um, ambient occlusion, texture baking in Blender, so post it, process it later in 2D on GIMP, well, I need a way to interconnect them, and that is a simple example of an interface. But I have more difficult interfaces that create than that. Each uh, interface requires certain requisites, but not burdens to accomplish. So the focus should be, when you start thinking about it, as a question for your mind, is what does this tool need? What does this tool provide? So my interface, well, workflow or pipeline, sometimes resembles something like this. I just uh, start modeling in Blender. Uh, UV mapping as well as in Blender, so the interface is direct. I could, for instance, use UV mapping in another tool, but it's not necessary because Blender has exceptionally good UV mapping tools. Same happens to AO, ambient occlusion, because Blender has very good generation of it. Uh, there are excellent uh, tutorials about 3D painting, but it's a little, little tricky at first. I don't know if um, in Blender 2.5 there are is, um, integrating the 3D painting of it. Uh, especially useful if you have uh, 3D paint tools and drawing tablets. Um, for 3D painting, well, it's a good approach for this kind of projects. I had to stick still in the old days tools because uh, I was using 2.49 because of time. SIO2 compatibility is not uh, uh, complete with 2.5, so I had, uh, uh, but in the time I had to modify the script, the Python script to work on it. So the tools must not determine what we are capable to do, but how do proceed to merge the parts involved in our workflow. And then, well, apart from that, we have to th start thinking about black boxing. What's black boxing? <coughs> and uh, it's a way of thinking, abstract thinking, in your stage. If you are graphic design, just think about it. If you are 3D design or prototyping or game compiling. One, one thing uh, about uh, the I see in games, it's an overwhelming amount of different things to do. Sometimes it doesn't allow you to see the whole picture as of some of different parts, and that diminishes the quality of the single steps. So keep things on the quality label you desire. You must sometimes focus on each part individually. In this project, for example, the development, the objective was captivating the user, so the quality has to be measured in every development stage. So time, short times, short budget as well, hard technical obstacles and lack of knowledge are against us. With regards to quality, I found myself that 
the iPhone and iPads are more, say, personal devices. So the need for a more human feeling in the characters is, in my point of view, a key and a strategic objective. So it's not only the production quality, but the concept quality control. In short, well, the use of free technologies plus uh, build, block, build block thinking allows you to raise the label of thinking over higher quality concepts, say, giving the characters more personality, for instance, regardless of, again, about the technology we're using. Yeah. Now, uh, regarding organization, data reuse models, do's and don'ts, very often, in this type of heavy loaded workflow, the need for specific skills to accomplish and learning it creates, because it's a, a machine to create information, makes that managing all that information becomes overwhelming, especially if you try to keep that in your head only. So in this case, I will show you, for instance, I managed to use a simple database this is a database I created to, you know, um, managing all the information I am not only doing in the past, but also what I am pursuing to do. For instance, mm, this is an example of a general task I have to attend, the type of activity I have to do, which part of my, of the character part is, what percentage of advance, and uh, well, everything on there. Speak your mind there. So there are, this is uh, another activity is 100% complete. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to, because it is easy to lose all that job if you don't have, you know, uh, a way to keep that knowledge management. So implementation. Let's go, let's get hands on that. Okay, so we will see first a uh, preliminary stage on the development process. As you see, well, uh, this is the character's body. Uh, it is, uh, well, um, ready to be in the UV mapping scheme. So. As you see, you have to put uh, all your creases in the parts where you shouldn't be looking too much at the character. <laughs> okay, uh, these um, checkers is for you know seeing if the image is well evenly distributed all over the the the, the mesh. In another stage, well. In this case, it's, uh, I'm preparing my character for integration with GIMP, in which I just color each uh, part of it, because probably you will e use uh, some advertising, some other kind of uniform, and you, you need to need to see in which parts you should I touch and which part don't. So this, this um, template image could use you in later in GIMP for layer um, uh, painting, uh, probably I have here in Texas, yeah. Where down uh, here? Yeah. I found this a better way to work. Uh, it would be grateful if it has some integration with Blender. So, uh, for instance, the ambient occlusion it was a previous bake, so I can remove it and put it uh, special details on the on the character's uniform. So you probably see. Okay. Let's move on. This is a almost done character. Then, um, in this uh, case, I have to thank people like uh, Andres Goralsic. I don't know if he's here, and uh, 
Nathan, uh, Nathan Vettel for the rigging. It's a, it's a very good rigging. I adapted for this. Uh, for this one, I should still, I need to put bones on here because this uh, won't work in a later process, which is integrating it into Blender 2.5 as reference libraries. And this, I expected this error. Because now I expected this one. I'll show you why. If I put this file here, it won't get the error. Because it is a object linking to it. So if I modify the other file, this file will be modified as well in terms of the geometry. So you can work in collaboration with other people, one dedicating to one stage, one dedicated to other. If the animator, mm, eh, no, the trick was this. All right. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Hola. <laughs> so the character is um, has the ma manipulated for almost everything. I wonder why is this working that way? I just uh, have a little bit of problem with the with the roll of on the on the foot. Well, but uh, I it, that's a job to do because she is going to play football, so she needed IKEA. Because uh, I, I started working with forward key, but it's uh, it's practically impossible to work with. And well, the, yeah, more final stage of the development. It will have all all the textures applied. And in this moment, I can see that, for instance, the one of the Things I use, of course, she needs uh, IKEA because she is playing football, and it is um, the texturing. I used to be using a, test, a simplistic model, which is one single mesh, one texture to all. That's because of SIO2 related restrictions. Well, not SIO2; it applies to almost every every game engine you're using. And uh, there are some times when you have uh, problems for with the geometry. In this case, you see it's, a, it's a only one geometry. But in the other case I showed to you, you will have, no, oh, not this one. Mm -hmm. This is the original reference model I'm using. Mm, not this one as well. These are all integrated as well. Mm, stage two. No, I don't know if I have it here. Well, if you have all, all the parts separate, like in this model, I think. Yeah. Uh, you will notice that you have um, all the UV mapping separate, so you have to integrate it. So what you do well is to join all the meshes. Let's say that we have done that. So it will create, of course, a mesh, a mess in your mesh, but you can separate that when. Uh, you are texturing, let's say, here. 
Mm, no, oh, let's use the another one. All right. Okay, well, yeah, now we have all all integrated, but uh, it's fairly easy, you know, to you, to you select with control out all the different uh, UV maps and reassign uh, in the proper place. Uh, I want to have the time to in automate that because sometimes you have to go back and modify some things here and there. And, well, um, sometimes you will have to, uh, in the assembly part, when you are, you know, linking all to export it into SIO2 and test it on the iPhone, iPad simulator, you have to uh, use, I used two approaches, and this is, one is brute force, which is when you have totally uncontrolled variables and you have to, you know, test if that is going to work. For instance, when I uh, was applying IKEA to the character, uh, I needed to to see what's going on because this is not working as it's supposed to be, to be. And then, well, what I saw is that a rule of thumb in SIO2 de development is that everything must be in layer one. So the deformed bones, the uh, all the manipulated bones must be there. Also, the widgets must must be in the layer one. So you put all, everything on there. And then you you can test if that works. You can go back and eliminate things that you don't need in the layer one. So test, test, test until you got the 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 set you need. And the procedure, of course, by the book, like for instance, when you are testing if the gravity 9.80, 9.81 would work. And this is more for fine-tuning the application. Um, future steps, porting to 2.5. One of the things that uh, managed to me to trying to get into 2.5 is that object uh, linking. The part of automation, especially for <coughs> UV setting and other, other stuffs, linking uh, objects to sport because Sometimes the object referenced doesn't work well with uh, export, perhaps because I don't know something I should, but. And uh, better rig, I would like to have forward inverse kinematic switching and a better foot roll. And of course, for uh, creating a better and richer movement for the character, I need to use BBH animation import. And. Um, there are some pitfalls and how to face them. Well, to converting, uh, when you are developing, I started developing this game for iPhone. So uh, when it comes to the iPad, I say, hi, I need an iPad. I want to see it working that in native resolution. So it's fairly easy because it's just converting the target to iPad is a mouse click operation. Um, bone layering to work in SIO2, I just commented that is put everything on layer one. I know that, for instance, uh, you can use the uh, bone layering mechanism, and that's the layering I am referring to. Most, all, all the bones need to be in the layer one. I know that it's uh, um, difficult to, to grab the bones, but as you are using widgets, as you are using this. All the widgets are those uh, figures you see here and there, floating around the, the character. Uh, you won't be troubled b b with the, 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 the fact that the, all the bones are there. So, <clears throat> well, and uh, texture matching between objects, okay. As you probably see here, all, all the objects, in, even if they are the same object, they are separate meshes. So you see that the head is here. Everything is separate, right? 
but that's a problem when you have to texture things like the neck because the neck and the body are separate. So you say, how do I seamless texture here? The, the, the main thing should be first rig it the way those vertices surrounding the problem area are all mm, modified in weight, in bone weighting by the same bones at the same pace. So they move it right. And then you could texture it here using the um, texture paint mode in um, where is it? I saw it just mm, here. Smear. So you see. Here, I don't know if you see the difference between these two colors. So if you just uh, gently, uh, you know, drag from here to here, this will here, mm, it's not happening anything. Oh, there. You see? Now I am like um, smudging, this is the name of the tool. So you can uh, smudge from one single tech, to, from one geometry to the other this way. So you can create a seamless co texture connection between them. And also you can use this uh, slight part to integrate it in GIMP. So you can put it or remove it if you need it. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be possible to show a little bit the game. Yeah? Well, it's a still, it's a still work in progress, so I don't know if they should. Hmm? There you go. So, hmm? I think it's going to be this way. Okay. So you see there. So this is a little facial test. And you will see here it's a little bit. Uh, the, the motion in the geometry is a is, um, little bit awkward. And I left it, left it that way because I wanted to explain to you this. If you do not. Uh, Keyframe every frame as it, as it happens in the Blender game engine, you will get this problem because of the interpolation between, for instance, if I move a hand from this place in layer one and this place in layer, let's say, 10, well, the movement is not going to be rounded, but the fist will move in a right way. So creating this, this sort of uh, deformations in the mesh. So, uh, one pitfall to eliminate it is to uh, keyframe every single frame or even or every other frame. So you can you don't have that sort of problem. So I think uh, there is not much left to comment. And uh, well, my suggestion to you is not reinvent the wheel, just uh, improve it and experiment a lot. So if you have any questions, thanks. I know I, uh, SIO2 is in the uh, development stage for, for instance, devices like Nokia and 900. Uh, but I am pretty sure the 2.0 version would uh, work also for other operating systems, but I am not sure if Android is the one of them. But you have to check out the website or probably other, other tools, perhaps they will go straight to it. But I rather stick to it because it's better connected with Blender. <laughs>
Um, does I SIO2 still has Lua as scripting possibility, and Absolutely. do you use it? Yeah, yeah, it's possible. I use it for mostly um, artificial intelligence things and some uh, physical issues, but uh, I haven't not gotten deep into it. But it, it, it can be done. Yes, absolutely. Do you have a more finished version of your product application that you could demo to us? Yeah, today? but I'm not able to show it now. But yes. Yeah. <laughs> more questions? Thank you. Um, the next session is cancelled. So in this theater, we continue at 3 o'clock. Uh, so have fun elsewhere. <laughs> Oh, and uh, for the speakers who are in here and are not going to attend the uh, evening dinner, please turn in your red uh, ticket for the dinner at the uh, registry desk. And for those who would like to join but don't have yet such a ticket, uh, at 6 o'clock with the registration doc, uh, desk be there. If, if there are f uh, of those uh, tickets returned, then you might be able to get the place. Otherwise, we are fully booked for the dinner. So I think that uh, we have here one uh, extempore uh, uh, show by SQ Steinberg for verse and first rated stuff. So those who like it can see that.